Justice Emmett Hall worked for the common good and was driven by principles of social justice. He achieved his dream of universality and accessibility in the healthcare system. I've decided to pursue a career in health services and policy research and I'm motivated by Justice Emmett Hall's legacy. My grandfather's family were immigrants from Ireland to Quebec in the early 19th century and lived uh, fairly close to Montreal and a tributary of the St. Lawrence River where they had a small mixed farm. He was part of a large uh, Irish Catholic family and I think um, that, that uh, those beginnings, uh, even although he went on uh, after his family migrated uh, to Saskatchewan, he went on to law school and to become um, a, um, a judge in Saskatchewan and then ev eventually elevated to the Supreme Court of Canada. He was principally known as a very uh, excellent criminal lawyer. I don't think he ever forgot his roots, um, or at least he, you know, this is what it seems. Um, and he very much lived a life um, that was dedicated to public service and dedicated to social justice. In 1961, Justice Emmett Hall was asked by Prime Minister Diefen Baker to lead the Hall Commission. The most incredible accomplishment was as the uh, chair of the Royal Commission on Health Services. And it really set the template for universal Medicare in Canada. The significance of that can't be understated. You know, at the time, we were very much like the United States and how we approached financing Medicare. And so he really just switched it all up. It had two choices. One was single-tier, single-payer Medicare based upon the Saskatchewan model. And the other was what I call multi-payer and uh, two-tier kind of Medicare that was being promoted by the insurance companies by the medical profession and by most provincial governments in the country as well as by members of Pearson's own cabinet. His report really put a, a line in the sand about which way we should go when it comes to health insurance. Based on uniform terms and conditions, everybody has access to the same health services in the same facilities. No business class, no economy class. And that is the system we effectively have today. And um, again, his review of Medicare conducted in 1979 that led to the Canada Health Act in 1984. And so it's really, I think, because of him that Canadians from coast to coast get to enjoy the benefits of public health insurance without having to pay out of pocket, at least for hospital and physician services. And so that's a massive, massive achievement. From the humanitarian standpoint, there is, we believe, an obligation on society to be concerned with the health of its individuals. But on the economic side, investments in health are investments in human capital, just as investments in engines and uh, railroads are investments in capital, so are investments in health. And they pay off in the economic field and they pay great dividends to a nation that looks after the health of its people. So what we say is that society has an obligation to assist the individual to accomplish that which he, by his own efforts, cannot attain. Canadian Medical Hall of Fame Laureate, Emmett Hall.